Okay, the plan for today is um, the plan for today is to give you, uh, let's say, an introduction to voice user interface. Uh, yesterday we have seen something about speech in general and about uh, uh, the three steps that are involved in speech. Uh, in spoken based interface that is speech recognition, speech synthesis and in some cases uh, natural language processing or understanding and we also played uh, uh, 15 minutes with uh, an Amazon Hiko mm -hmm. so this is, we are not going to do this again we just did this yesterday and so we can proceed uh, my goal for today is to complete this uh, set of slides and uh, uh, that are split in two parts. The first part is a little bit more general, again on voice user interface and related system. Let's call that it theoretical still. The second part instead is more oriented towards how to design, how to develop, how to realize a voice user interface. So that next week, uh, on, on Tuesday, we will start uh, programming a prototype user interface here by using web technology, HTML and JavaScript in general for speech recognition and speech synthesis in a browser and uh, PHP for the server side since it was on that pool on Slack the the most uh, uh, the, the language that most of you uh, previewed imagine to use in your project uh, there is not a lot of code uh, server side but some of that is is there um, this will happen starting on from tuesday and will go on for the entire week uh, for both lectures and if you have a laptop like those that you have in front of you and if you want to bring here the laptop on tuesday and wednesday you are more than welcome and also it's suggested to do this because i will give you a skeleton application to get started with just the css part completed most of the html part completed and some uh, lines of php code done for the project just to get started from a basic project so we, so that on on top of that, we can build the speech recognition part, the speech synthesis part. And finally, even if it's not something that all of you may use, a natural language understanding part. So to have a complete prototype for your system with example, with technologies and so on. And since we are in the news, uh, one more thing. Uh, two more things tomorrow the lab will last three hours uh, as you will will see i've seen on on slack and because we we missed the lab last last week so tomorrow we'll have three hours of labs in labinf uh, the idea for tomorrow is to uh, work on what is the milestone number three that consists of uh, wireframe or your prototype so after milestone number two, you should have uh, decided how to proceed if to put together your paper prototype, if you continue with the first one, with the second one, or pieces of the first and the second, or any combination of these. And the first thing that we are asking you is to move from the paper prototypes to one wireframe with two screens, the main screen or your web application, let's say the home page and another significant screen so not the wireframe of everything just of two pages and starting from that after the wireframe a uh, html and css skeleton of that wireframe pages so just again two or three pages two pages not anymore after that you can let's say finally if you want start working coding on your prototype and most of the lab hour after let's say starting from to tomorrow and 
going on with the course will be devoted to your you that work on your prototype in a supervised way so no more milestone except one milestone that is about evaluation but you need to have a paper um, a prototype an interactive prototype quite advanced almost complete to think and work about a user evaluation that will also be the next topic in the lecture after this voice oriented part this just to uh, yes one more thing we are a little bit late on giving feedback about milestone number two that you delivered on time obviously and um, so we are a little bit on, uh, late on that uh, this could this should not be a huge problem since if you conducted a well done heuristic evaluation to another group project you should have enough uh, quantitative let's say reasonable information to move on mm -hmm. so the feedback we can provide cannot be really drastic about uh, if you if you made a, if you follow properly the process could not be anything really strange we will try to do something uh, before the lab of tomorrow but we are really late on that uh, sorry but again proceed with the lab and milestone number three it should not be uh, a problem in a way that is different from milestone number one where you have the project idea and the project idea should be uh, well sounded to to proceed with paper prototypes and to avoid any problem any question on this good uh, so voice user interface uh, as we have partially seen yesterday voice user interface allow the user a generic user in this moment to interact with a system through voice or speech command and we have seen yesterday that there is a difference between voice and speech a speech uh, we um, come, came to the conclusion that speech is structured language in a specific language in english in italian in spanish in whatever you want while voice is just the sound that you produce with your mouth so something like uh, haha is voice is not a speech command but maybe in some cases a voice command hmm? uh, what we are what i didn't uh, tell you yesterday was that voice in reality is much more than this hmm? as you may imagine uh, voice ident may identify a person so a system may understand speech commands only from a specific voice or al allowed some specific voice to uh, uh, sorry uh, may accept some specific speech command only from a specific voice and other from another voice uh, like privilege for instance and also voice can give other information like i am speaking out loud I'm speaking fast, I'm speaking uh, slowly. This is everything that is related to the voice domain and not to the speech domain. Mm -hmm. Obviously, where we speak in a structural way, in a language, we put together all this. But we are, when we are thinking about voice user interface, we typically think about speech like natural language understanding and voice with everything else. <laughs> and some system uh, like for example uh, Siri on uh, on iOS and also on Mac try to uh, accept speech command only by specific voices uh, other system like Alexa don't even try to do that so they accept speech command by almost anybody in that specific language uh, this is just to, to have um, a clear picture of which, which are the differences here we are trying we will put together speech and voice without any difference to, to ease the the conversation and the voice user interface are obviously voice and user interfaces just mean as the input modality and eventually optionally the output modality from the system to the from or to the system mm -hmm. so instead of mouse uh, use a mouse based user interface it's a voice based user interface uh, as we have seen yesterday, primary advantages of voice user interface are hands-free possibility and also an hands-free interaction, in, not in a multimodal way. So you can speak and 
obtain some result even if you are looking uh, or doing something else uh, then you may have encountered maybe listened somewhere uh, speaking about conversational user interface and not voice user interface so there is a difference and which is so a conversation a conversational user interface by definition is a user interface is a system for users which mimics a conversation with humans like a human being uh, this is not reached in general by any existing system you have we have experimented yesterday with Alexa that most of the sentences most of the uh, intervention we we made were just not conversational there was a question and an answer and, and that's and that's it then another question and another answer the only case yesterday that we tried sort of trigger the conversation was when we asked for a recipe from Giallo Zafferano that it listed 10 different um, recipe and then ask which one which one do you want to learn more about and then we say um, i think merluzzo or whatever and it stopped there so um, it, it started a conversation could be a little bit more conversation but typically most of the interaction is question and answer and then, then next question and next answer and this is a first the distinction the other distinction is that typically a conversational user interface does not restrict to voice it's about natural language not voice specifically so conversational or conversational user interface included also text-based chatbots a telegram chatbots is a conversation user interface not only voice also text while voice user interface are well voice user interface only for voice uh, in most of cases text base and voice are mixed together in a unique interface and so these terms are often used in an exchangeable way conversational voice but the difference is on the modality the conversation should suppose a conversation not just answer and and, and question and answer and could also be text based while a voice user interface could be uh, also question and answer and should in could include what we have seen yesterday hmm? a screen reader could be a voice user interface from the synthesized part and the speech recognizer for writing text the text we have seen yesterday also could be a voice user interface because you c command most of that by voice hmm? even if you don't have any specific intelligence or natural language understanding of some sort or not so complex uh, nowadays we can split contemporary voice user interface in three categories screen first voice only and voice first so without looking at the slide uh, an example for each of three screen first system Alexa yesterday the Alexa that we the Amazon Echo used yesterday was a uh, voice only great screen first let's think of a, a physical device that is easier probably so voice only uh, an Amazon Echo for instance voice for a screen first a smartphone with Google Assistant or Siri or whatever it is Samsung Bixby if it exists again still uh, a screen first it's a device that is born as a screen as a graphical user interface and it adds voice for some of the uh, capabilities for some function and voice first instead we have seen a picture of a voice first system uh, last week when we are speaking about multimodality I think the yeah the Amazon Echo with the screen it's a voice first system because it was thought as a voice system that adds a screen for some other and these are different level of mixing screen with voice because voice is as we have seen yesterday and also as we have seen in the multimodality voice and screen and visual are really really powerful 
voice is a really useful input and simple and immediate input system for a computing system while vision uh, screens are an efficient output system for a computer so they try to accept uh, voice only system they try to put together voice and screen with different uh, feature and with different uh, limitations so screen first device uh, you currently spot are smartphone tablets and something like that and they are nowadays most of the contemporary voice interface device so most of the voice, inter voice interaction can happen on a smartphone because we have just much more smartphone than uh, Amazon Echo or similar uh, uh, around. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a speech recognition part, a speech synthesis part, and also some understanding of the natural language. And they made typically a good, um, good result with speech recognition and language processing feature even if you have overall experience across devices across products quite different quite fragmented siri does things in a way google assistant does things in another way and there is not a uniform layer and all these systems at different degree have three main limitations uh, they are missing something they are missing functionalities or visual affordances because they are screen first device so they have a screen and when they are used in a voice mode like inside siri or uh, in the google assistant uh, screen let's say make a very somewhat poor use of screen space while speaking so for what concern things that we are missing first of all we are missing functionality so users for instance can start a task via voice but then the next step is not performed by voice in most of cases so here we have two example uh, one with siri one with google assistant with siri uh, they they say uh, find a recipe for chocolate uh, cookie uh, chocolate chips cookies and siri say, say okay found something on the web and the next step is pressing one of these link you cannot say okay the first one the, the interaction the conversation stop here there is a request that is voice based there is an answer that is okay i found something on the web and then you have to pick the phone and tap on one of these link if you like one of that and a similar things happen here hmm? on google assistant uh, you say find a recipe for chocolate chip cookies and then here you go this is the answer and then show several mm, of this sheet for a recipe that if you click that open on a web browser and so the interaction continue on the web continue on a screen and this is just just two examples but a lot of tasks start with voice and does not continue instead they could create a really a really a conversation for instance of that by allowing for example okay what this is a recipe what do you want to open the first the second the third and then you maybe you can read you can open that on a browser but you can read uh, some important information an overview a, summar a summary of the recipe so that the person can say okay i, I would like to to cook these cookies or next one because I, this i don't like or it's too long or whatever it is and this is the first thing is missing functionality the second thing is miss missing some visual affordances so uh, Siri, for instance, uh, omits several visual affordances in this screen here. Mm. So it's not in this example, but uh, for instance, when you uh, write a message, want to write a message, uh, you say something like, hey Siri, um, write a message to person X and say, okay, perfect. What do you want to say to Sharon this, in this example? Say, okay, write um, hello how are you and he say okay i'm writing hello how are you do you want to send it or no you say yes or no and it sends the message or not but you have no possibility to edit that message you don't have that tap to edit button link or whatever it is to edit the message because maybe in the speech recognition you siri misses some words or there was a noise and so you have to say no don't send it and start from scratch or just open the message application and write 
the message directly there, but in this case, probably this function is almost useless if you have to open the graphical user interface to do that. So some affordances are missing, some buttons and so on. Google Assistant is better in this. Uh, so, so the user interface of Siri changed a little bit from this, but not in this specific case. Uh, Google Assistant is a little bit better. Where are the visual affordances here in this screen, in Google Assistant? I see at least two different visual, uh, visual affordances that can be useful to, to know more or to do some other action with chocolate chips cookie. Any idea? The keyboard here, yeah, no? From here and onwards. Here you have some button. You can press, for instance, about chocolate chip cookies. And so to know uh, more about chip cookies and a message here could be something like edit. So this space is reserved for additional function. And also this, send to Google Home. So send this specific recipe to a voice-based assistant because Google Home is the equivalent of uh, the Amazon Echo. So you can also have this red. So they use this space to also provide other information, other cues of what you can do on that. So this is an example of a recipe. If you have a message, you have some buttons to, for instance, edit a message that was uh, written by speech, hmm? was performed a speech-to-text translation. Hmm? And in other cases, it's better than this, uh, better than Siri, uh, for instance, for visual affordances, but in many other cases, they are, it, it has some problem as well. Hmm? It seemed that in, for visual affordances, it seemed that they were just put there uh, as voice assistant, but without really thinking about uh, the screen that is already there. And this brings to the second, uh, um, the, the, the other big missing uh, fee limitation, that is the uh, poor screen space use. So these two examples with Siri are really uh, emblematic. So first of all, you have a totally different user interface from the normal no buttons, no anything. And also the information that are available to user are less than the graphical user interface counterpart. So for instance here, if you say check my messages, uh, new messages, uh, it say uh, you have new messages from Sharon, yes, great. And that new message, what does it tell? What is written that message? Wait, you cannot tell the message read the message. You have the speech synthesis capability because you are speaking, so speak the message. Maybe you can ask, do you want that I read the message to you? And they say yes or, or not, it depends on the context maybe. But this is not even a po uh, an option. You have to ask, check my message, you have a new message from Sharon, okay, so I will unlock my phone and open the message application and read the message. Probably I, I will look at the notification, it was the same thing. and. Uh, here, it's, it's again, hmm? not a lot of information, totally different from the message application. Right now, in the current version of Siri, this, is, this part here, this part here is more closer to the graphical user interface, is more similar. In that version, it was very, very different. So they are trying to, but again, very poor screen space from a visual from designing a visual user interface. And again, these are screen-first devices. So the screen is present and is the main uh, way of interacting with the device. And, and, and that's it about screen-first device. About voice-only device, instead, as we have seen yesterday, we have no visual display at all. Uh, audio, audio is for input and output, plus some uh, feedback lights, like the ring on the Ecodot. Uh, they 
only allowed hands-free operation because you don't have anything to, to see or anything to touch except with the volume a again they do a quite good uh, they have a quite good currency in speech recognition if you don't mix different languages and yesterday we, did, we didn't have the the chains but if you uh, want to reproduce uh, I don't know, um, a, a, a music album from um, an english-speaking uh, artist and you say in italian riproduci la musica di artista o riproduci la musica uh, di uh, riproduci l'ultimo album di whatever it is uh, the name of the album in english it's typically it doesn't get the, the name right because it thinks it tried to understand that english name in italian so there is a mismatch and also for the speech synthesis this could be a problem uh, yesterday we asked uh, for timu movies in the night and uh, we happen to be only italian um, name of, of movies but if you have a i don't know a movie like terminator or Storm stormbreaker or any other movie that has a, an English title or not Italian title it will pronounce in a very very terrible way because it reads like Italian name for that so it's quite good of course in speech recognition speech synthesis but if you stick with one language um, especially voice only device uh, Google Assistant do, the, do this a little bit better for instance and another feature of this voice only device is that only auditory signal are used for cues hmm, to understand if this is listening or not because again no visual affordance you don't have a screen even if some feedback lights could be used in, in some cases to provide more information obviously they have some limitation as well they typically are quite prolix in the answer uh, we have partially seen yesterday when again we asked for a recipe from Giallo Zafferano it listed 10 different recipe and at the end you say okay the first one was so they are quite prolix this is a limitation but it's also uh, something that is in some cases is appropriate to do to be quite prolix we will see that uh, in a while in, a guide, in the guidelines uh, but this could be also a limitation you have to write a balance uh, how much information you are delivering to your user mm -hmm. typically the uh, Giallo Zafferan example with 10 different recipe is a bad doesn't met a uh, good uh, guidelines for that mm -hmm. even an Amazon guideline it doesn't met by the Giallo Zafferano uh, which recommends to limit the option to just three options mm -hmm. yesterday the latest recipe from Giallo Zafferano were again like 10 so much more than three um, the second limitation and that you have to know what to say and since you don't have a screen you cannot have any suggestion um, some operation can be let's say challenging so for instance you can easily set up a timer uh, but then you don't know how much time is left if you want if you want to know how much time is left you have to ask the status of the timer because yeah they don't have a screen so they cannot display the timer but for instance uh, if you think of alexa it, it can the amazon echo it can use the feedback light to to show uh, more or less how time is left is 50 percent left is 75 percent is a ring of light it could be used for instance in that case to augment the information but obviously uh, only by voice by default is not possible to it, it would be really annoying if if they say okay it's left one one minute left 59 seconds left 58 seconds left it's 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 impossible and similarly getting a weekly weather forecast or the latest recipe from Giallo Zafferano is a memory test what was the first option out of 10 um, so these are things to, to think when uh, a voice only device is is, is produced is is designed 
And again, some actions are not allowed nor expected. So obviously you cannot insert your Wi-Fi password vocally on this device. You have to open the, the companion app or the companion website. And similarly, you cannot hear about all the available and installable skills. Skills are extensions that increase the capability, the feature of these devices. Like, yeah, again, today is uh, Giallo Zafferano advertising. Like Giallo Zafferano is a skill for uh, the, the Amazon Echo hmm? that connect to the service of Giallo Zafferano. So you cannot hear about all the possible skills because they are thousand, million, so you cannot say, tell me all the skill, because you will never end. So they don't allow you to have. This option is not an option on the Amazon Echo, for instance. So up to now, screen first device, some good things, some other things. Uh, obviously, screen and voice could be very important, very advantageous to be used together, voice only device. Most of the limitation are due to the fact that you don't have a screen. And so they come up with first voice first devices. So these are two Amazon Echo with screen. This is, this is dismissed. The second one is dismissed. It was called Spot. And this is instead the replacement for these much more bigger five or eight inches screens, much more space for information. These are voice first device because they were designed to be used by voice, not by using the screen. The screen may, in some cases, augment the audio output with visual information to try to overcome some of the limitation of the voice-only devices. Among these and the previous device, there are no difference from the voice perspective, same capability. Uh, obviously, GUIs here are less capable than the guy, the GUIs in screen-first devices. So you see here in this Echo Spot, probably this is a timer, just no button, uh, no other cues, no function, just the timer that is going down. In the other case, is probably a book or a song, I don't know. You have some, you have the text and you have some button here, just three here. Uh, you can enable, disable the lyrics. And, and see nothing if you disable the lyrics on reproduce in loop and so on. But this is a, a, a things that happen rarely. Hmm? The fact that they provide buttons or menu because they are voice first device. They, the main way to interact with that is by voice or via the companion mobile app that they uh, device that they provide because it, the focus is still on voice. Hmm? So this cover the three kind of devices that uh, we may have nowadays. Voice only, uh, screen first, and um, voice first. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the most promising nowadays are voice first, mm -hmm. because try to put together the best of both worlds. Uh, uh, some people say that in the future this may not be the case. Maybe we get enough advantage uh, or get enough ideas on how to work with voice only device, or we can reach the parity among voice first and screen first device. And so they don't have all these distinctions. But right now, the approach to having a voice mixed with a screen seems promising because you can, again, use voice as a very efficient input modality and screen and visual as a very good and efficient output modality. So you can really combine, let's say, the best of two worlds. So, and this close the, let's say, theoretical part, more general part, and open this, okay, but how we can design visual user interface? Being there, voice only, system voice first or screen first which are processes which are guidelines do they exist which we can take into account and not so just to recap voice interaction between people and these devices is maybe challenging because you have to learn how to speak to these devices which set of commands they uh, accept 
And so in, in some way is analogous to learning a new language. You're speaking Italian, you're trying to learn English. You're speaking Italian, English, whatever, and you're trying to learn the Alexa language that appears, it is in, in English, but it doesn't understand everything that you, or not in Italian, but it doesn't understand everything that you, you, you say, or it has not an action associated to everything that you say. And, these, uh, and this is true both for the users that use the system, but also from the designer, the engineer, the, the developer point of view, because you have to do some choices and your choices impact how people will use that. So this, uh, by continuous this analogy, learning a foreign language is typically easier through immersion. If you go alone in another country uh, without knowing almost anything of that country, it's much more easier to learn the new language while following 1,000 courses here in Italian with all Italian people speaking Italian in any occasion except the exercise that are in other language. And by continuing this analogy, voice-first devices have an advantage in this because they can try to teach the new language, try to teach how to interact. And voice-first devices in particular have some successful example in doing this immersion. So here you have an example. This, uh, this device here, you see probably this is the, the home screen of the device. You see the temperature and the date and the position uh, in the United States. And here they say, try Alexa, what's the weather in Seattle? This is a suggestion that you probably don't even care. A suggestion to change from time to time. And it's a way to uh, provide, to teach people how to interact. So randomly showing new speech commands. So this is quite uh, simple, but maybe other commands could be more complex or new if you are just buying these and put it uh, at home. Other example are sequential numbering of search results. So if you are looking for, again, the 10 um, Jalo Zafferano recipe, here you can see maybe uh, a recipe here, another here, another here, and then you can scroll and see all the other. And this could be augmented by voice. And Alexa could say, for instance, and, and will say when you have a search results, uh, tell me number one, number two, number three, do you want to proceed? And you could say number one, number two. So you don't have to say all the content on the screen but it helps you in uh, interacting or suggest to select number one, say this or that. And also voice accessible interactive visual content. You may see something here, it will also pronounce, or it can suggest how to, to say that, how to interact with that visual content. For instance, how to get more information about the weather. Hmm? like uh, if it will rain tomorrow or not. Hmm? And, and this in general, so it's a good idea to provide some sort of immersion, trying to teach in a subtle, in a subtle way to user how to use your system, your voice interface. Uh, but there is a big uh, attention point here that is that people with voice interface, with conversion interface, especially vocally, have unrealistic expectation. They expect, without knowing the technology, to speak naturally, like with a conversational partner, partner, with another human being. So they're expecting to speak freely. And if these things behave, don't behave better, uh, doesn't reply or stop working, for some cases they are much more uh, frustrated than the equivalent things in graphical user interface because they are much more expectation about this natural way of communicating with the device. With respect to graphical user interface, that is something that is clearly different and not possible with other human beings, obviously.
So this is something to have always in mind and that all the guidelines that exist <coughs> have this as, let's say, fundamental principle. People have often unrealistic expectation about <coughs> conversational voice-based user, um, user interfaces because they are expecting to speak like another, with another person. And this is not, let's say, yet possible at least. So how we can design a voice user interface? Obviously, there is a process. A process that uh, for a great part is not different from the processes that we uh, show you during this course. So for instance, uh, the first thing to design a, a voice user interface is to have a clear picture of your user. Who are your user? Uh, who is communicating in this case? They are children, they are doctors, they are speech pathologists. And, and according to that, you can obviously choose different languages, different uh, words. So maybe uh, visual, a voice user interface for a doctor in hospital has some, fe has some features and can use some terminology. A voice user interface for a child at home to have this child maybe play as totally different interaction modality, a totally different terminology. It may be more joyous, may be more playable uh, than something more, let's say, serious for a doctor uh, in an hospital. So the user, and again, all the need finding strategy may apply here as for the visual part. And the second thing, so I have, I have a clear picture, is what are the needs? Again, need finding and uh, which requirements do you have about these needs? So what they are communicating about, what they will ask about, which kind of answer you will expect to give to this person. Mm? Again, different scenario uh, from a doctor in hospital is way different. Also this for supporting doctor doing uh, um, paperwork in an hospital is way different than Halloween children to play at home. And again, here, all the strategies of need finding and prototype apply. So maybe if you are designing a voice-only uh, user interface, you don't have a paper prototype because you don't have anything to, to draw on a piece of paper, but you can use the Wizard of Oz methodology, for instance. Uh, similarly, if you have a voice-first or screen-first device, you can do uh, instead a paper prototype uh, and apply the same methodology also for this. So this first part is really, uh, let's say, universal uh, from graphical and voice user interface. Then, while in, gr in graphical user interface, you have some, let's say, languages that are buttons, that are menus, that are navigation bar, that you can choose where to put, but they are, you, you know that, because you, you have seen a, a lot of time in other graphic interface, or because you, you have thought about that. Uh, and so you put a button here, a button there. You, here you don't have the equivalent of buttons, navigation, and so on. And so you have to do something a little bit different, that is, let's say, closer to a storyboard, from a user scenario, from a certain point of view, that is to write some dialogue. The user is saying this, and the voice user interface is answering this, and what may happen after. There is another question, or the conversation stops, or, or not. And so write some simple dialogue, and also sketch a diagram of the conversation. Not only the dialogue, but how these dialogues are connected together. So, for instance, I would greet a person. Hi, how are you? And the person will answer. And after that, I would like to have another step of the conversation. I don't want to stay in hi, how are you, for all day long. Continue to say hi, 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 and so on. So maybe we would like to, to go over that. So we need a, a diagram of the conversation. Both of them convey, obviously, the flow that the user will eventually experience with your 
um, your system and by using the sample dialog and the diagram you can also informally experiment like a, a very small evaluation and evaluate also different strategies so for instance again with a wizard of oz methodology you can have a person acting as the voice assistant and having person trying your conversation asking things and receiving responses smart responses without having to implement anything and you can also uh, evaluate different strategies like okay, i don't know okay i have a user request um that is to be confirmed because turn on the light yes no or oh, i have a problem how we can confirm this request with an implicit confirmation it's a sound uh if you have a screen that's okay or with a, 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 a diagram um, a picture of a lamp that is turning on or we have an explicit confirmation like yes i'm going to turn on your lamp your lamp is turned on which one is better so probably in the case of the lamp the first one but in general maybe not so you can also explore we, you will not be required to do that but in general you can also explore different strategies to solving the same um, the same problem by evaluating uh, um, we, we will see that in, in some week by performing let's say an a b evaluation so you have two ways of doing things and comparing these with different people to understand which one is better according to some metrics so these simple dialogue and diagram of conversation flow allow you to also do this kind of experiment and to understand how to design a better uh, user interface without having to write one line of code um, and then when you design a voice user interface it's always uh, a suggestion to focus on the spoken conversation before considering any visual element so what we are going to say as a device or as a user and then we say okay the conversation is is enough the conversation is robust enough how we can augment this conversation with a visual design a visual element if any if possible so in general imagine to work with a voice only device and then if you have a screen use the screen as a complement to allow what we for multimodal interaction we call the redundancy multiple information provided in different way vocally and with a screen if possible um, another thing that i forgot to say before uh, that the, we we have seen yesterday as well and we will see next week when we try to code something uh, is that all the system does do basically anything uh, without the user so the user the person is the one that starts the conversation always you don't have a system that at a certain point say oh okay do you want to ask me something or do you want that i will do something by its own there is always a user that say as we have seen yesterday computer or alexa or hey siri or something that start the process and then the computer system answer to the process behave hopefully correctful to that input from the user the only exception is when the only apparent exception is when this input from the user is instead coming from i don't know a text message uh, from from the same user to the system or is triggered by something that the user set up like for instance if i open a door then I have the system asking me something so this is the only exception but in the 99 percent of cases it's always the user that trigger the voice uh, assistant either in voice only devices in voice first or in screen first system this is a, a feature of that all the system mo the the product like alexa or siri behave in this way and either the pieces that you may put together to create from scratch a visual user interface behave in the same way it's always the user the start the conversation and then the system that answer to that 
okay this was uh, a parenthesis um, about designing a voice user interface we as human being have four possible uh, conversational frame between other person between pe people and that are summarized here we are speaking we are starting a conversation and then the example are mostly related to the device instead we're starting a conversation for controlling something or someone but probably it's better something so during the conversation specify a goal with means of achieving it in the case of uh, voice user inter interface could be for instance play radio dj from tunein we would like to control something we would like to specify a goal play something from a service hmm? or we can delegate closer to the first one close to the first one but uh, not not the same asking for an outcome without specifying how to achieve play some jazz music I, I don't really care when, when this jazz music came which music you are playing the, the, the important thing is that you have to play music and this music is in the category jazz that's it you can get it from a radio from in the, in the case of Amazon Echo from uh, Amazon Music from Apple Music from Spotify I don't really care I just want some jazz music play it and, and these two are basically what uh, uh, are adopted by contemporary voice user interface we can control or delegate you cannot nowadays do a lot of other things we don't have guiding we don't have collaborating guiding is possible <coughs> could be used also could be implemented nowadays guiding is discussing the means of achieving a goal so i can say computer i want to hear some music what should i do and let's say alexa could say uh, you have to say play some music from so can give a suggestion on can guide my decision i have a doubt i don't know how to express this uh, control uh, frame or this delegating frame and i can ask for information this is something that nowadays doesn't happen with these uh, devices but it's it's reasonable it, and it's possible what typically doesn't happen and maybe is not uh, really uh, possible nowadays is this collaborate collaboration framing so mutually deci deciding on goal between parties what should we do so maybe in group what we are going to to do this saturday night this collaboration this decision group decision is something that we don't have in uh, in voice user uh, interfaces we don't have in a personal assistant like alexa and probably we will not have for uh, a long time maybe for for different reason um i i, I have some trouble in imagining in imagining that um, we are trying to collaborate with alexa to decide something but who knows uh, so nowadays the first two frames are already present and typically we have seen them yesterday especially the first one um, this, the third one could be added could be also useful to uh, add information to learn to immerse people in this new language while the collaboration is something a little bit um, in the for the future let's say and let's come out to guideline for designing visual user voice user interface so there is a process mm, understanding user targeting the target and their needs and the requirements sketching some um, conversation and then we have some guidelines here like in the visual uh, counterpart here you have six different guidelines that are way general and then in these slides you also have other guidelines that are specific guidelines so for instance amazon for alexa for the skills of alexa present five main guidelines be adaptable be personal available re relatable and establish and maintain trust uh, google 
uh, as instead a more a style guide and conversational design guidelines that are much more longer and also some guidelines about handling error. The six guidelines that uh, I'm going to present here are, let's say, something that they are in common among them and a little bit more general, but they are uh, they exist also in the separate, more specific guideline. Mm -hmm. So the first guideline is provide user with information about what they can do. Mm -hmm. So this uh, could be realized in two ways. First one, uh, if the user asks something that doesn't make sense or is not possible, just do something, not, don't stop there. Mm -hmm. But provide them with an available option just don't say i did not understand which is the default behavior of most of this uh, voice user interface but if you have a weather application and you say uh, tell me tell me the weather and the weather application say okay uh, from which city and from which day for instance so try to have the information or if you say at the weather application, give me the latest recipe, maybe the, the user inform the weather application say, you can ask for today waiter or for a weekly forecast for recipe, open the Giallo Zafferano app or ask for other things. So provide user with information about what they can do. And if they cannot do that, try to explain what they can do instead and also an exit strategy must be always present and available so yesterday we have seen the stop of alexa that is an exit strategy you can continue to speak alexa for instance was saying about the radio and you say stop and it stopped the operation so it's an exit strategy for any cases This is obviously similar also to uh, providing suggestions. So voice, uh, voice first devices can provide suggestion that provides suggestion on screen is also uh, providing user with information about what they can do because you see some random suggestion here or uh, the system that can say to select uh, the option number one, say this is a way to provide the user with the right information to perform their goal. The second guideline is where I am, where am I? So since you don't have a visual uh, affordance, you don't have navigation, you don't have anything else, users must be told which functionality or part of functionality they are using. So for example, if a user asks for the weather forecast, an uh, appropriate answer is today's weather forecast is the weather forecast a bad uh, answer is it, it will rain when it will rain where w what we are speaking about so this is quite a simple example because i i'm saying today weather forecast and the system answer rain and probably uh, anybody could relate the question and the answer but if you imagine uh, much longer conversation you need to have this because otherwise you don't know in which step of the process you are and this is we have we have we have listened yesterday this is the default behavior when i asked uh, um, alexa the in the year in which uh, montalcini won the nobel prize it doesn't answer 1986 it doesn't answer Montalcini won the Nobel Prize in 19... So it re reprised my question in 1986 with the, with the topics on etc, etc, etc. So a lot of information. Uh, and this guideline, I, will, I, I can anticipate you, will be partially conflicting with the last guideline. So you have to find a balance between giving all the information but not giving too much information to the user. So probably saying uh, if the user asks um, what's the weather forecast, an appropriate 
uh, answer is today's weather forecast is rainy uh, and not appropriate answer is today's weather forecast is rainy and the temperature is and tomorrow will be and we have an alert for this this afternoon and so on because I, I don't want to say the weather forecast for today not the entire story of its life or uh, what's the temperature outside temperature outside is 3 degree with a minimum of 2 and a maximum of 10 it's probably a suitable answer if you start saying yeah, and tomorrow and it will rain and it will not rain and so on probably it's too much and this is something that happens with uh, contemporary um, uh, voices interface and another feedback is to use non-auditory feedback if possible so complement the voice with visual feedback be they the, the light yesterday we have seen that Alexa where you call it uh, lights a ring on its top this is a visual feedback to say to the user I'm, I'm turned on I get your wake word am I ready to accept the next part of this conversation to accept the question and this is a non-auditory it's just a visual language it's a visual feedback very very simple but it's a feedback because otherwise if you say Alexa and it's nothing happens you don't know if it take the word or if it needs to, to you need to say that again or what else if it's working not working there's some problem so at least with a, a feedback is is immediate that the, and the Amazon Echo was triggered and you can proceed uh, with the question without saying again Alexa or a computer or whatever so some wizard feedback may be useful could be a light could be a messenger screen to just let user know that the system is listening the system is working and that everything is fine or, or that not or that something is troublesome so for instance again if the Amazon Echo uh, like yesterday didn't have the wireless connection and you try to say Alexa tell me the weather uh, it, the, the ring becomes red and say or it also say we have no I, I cannot connect to the internet to provide you any answer but we also have this visual uh, feedback on the device itself hmm? um, when you have to suggest new words new speeches either text in a visual format or by speaking at by speaking it try to provide a full example of speech commands hmm? so try to say or try to display you may ask what is the weather in Turin tomorrow hmm? not just what's the weather or what's the weather in Turin but try to pre present all the possible option there is a place and there is a time so from there to what's the weather in Turin today, it's immediate. But the user know that you can ask for a specific place and you can ask for a specific time, not just for now or from here in that application. Maybe another application is Turin only and you may ask only the weather in Turin and change the day. But it's a choice of the person that developed the application. So providing a full, let's say, example, it's, it's easier to work better with the application. Or again, uh, play Radio DJ from TuneIn. Play a name of the radio from a service. Then typically during execution, uh, those systems leverage on default setting or additional information or ask by mis for missing pieces. So, the location, for instance, of weather forecast, as uh, we have seen yesterday um, in, in, in our trial with uh, the Amazon Echo, uh, can be retrieved uh, by GPS or can be set up as default. So if I say what's the weather, it immediately gets as default today and where the location is set. So, to, so here. Hmm? So it may work with uh, smaller sentences, but it assumes that something exist or if, if it can it cannot uh, or, or for instance tune in tune in for instance in uh, in the amazon eco is the default uh, service for radio so if you say play 
any radio stop or play any radio from tune-in it's the same because the radio is always played by tune-in if you don't change the option and alexa if say play radio dj uh, told you okay i'm playing radio dj from tune-in it will tell you previous guidelines previous yeah, previous guidelines that uh, the service that is using is tune-in this is an information that maybe is useful maybe not but is an, is an information that it has to, to provide you for completeness. Or in other cases, uh, a voice user interface may ask for missing pieces. This during ex execution. When you are providing example, try to provide complete example. And then in execution, it may ask. So uh, as an anticipation, we will are going to create uh, next week a chat chat-like system voice user interface but also textual for weather forecasting and if the the place is missing uh, the system will not use any default alternative but it will ask for where where we will ask the user the place so let's start a conversation what's the weather where in turin okay the weather in turin is and so on so you can also this system could also ask if they have some information that is missing it's not default it cannot be retrieved you can also ask okay tell me the information this information is really important it's mandatory tell me how to fill that slot that pieces of information but this is something that happens during execution while you are designing you have to assume that to provide a complete example and if you are designing in your conversation, you may decide to leverage from some default um, settings or to ask the user for the very important parts. And, and finally, um, and this is partially to be balanced with uh, this guide, with this, the first one guideline here hmm, that is user must be told which functionality they are using so it's quite prolix uh, need to be balanced to limit the amount of information both in the answer and in the things that you are asking hmm. so you for, for for the weather forecast you may ask the place and you can provide an example with the place and uh, the and the day for the weather forecast or the period for the weather forecast uh, if you are creating an application for handling uh, uh, radio for instance multiple radios maybe it's not a good idea to say uh, to have an example play name the radio from service with a volume of for this time for this duration etc 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 these are really redundant and probably use useless information for uh, most of the people they could be relevant to your application to set the volume, but it's not really uh, important. So keep uh, the delivered information brief, again, both in the answer and in the acceptable uh, question. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of the guidelines of Amazon is that uh, they recommend that not to list in an answer more than three different options each time. So not to do, to do as uh, Jalo Zafferano does, basically even if that is working on Alexa. And what they suggest is that if you have more option, either group them in some way. Okay, lattice recipe, you have three, the, the Jalla Zafran example, three first plate, three second plate, and two dessert. Do you want to uh, recipe for one of these category and which one? So you can engage in a conversation instead of just listening to three, three, 10 different recipe of different categories so try to group them or find another way you as a designer as a developer as uh, yeah, as designer to to accomplish the same goal to present the 10 information if you want to group them just split the question for instance or find other way or use the, the, the screen if you have the screen so uh, and this is to be balanced again with the other questions so what's the weather in turin the weather in turin is today is it's fine but try not to be too much 
prolix and to provide too much information. Another example was yesterday when we asked about the Nobel Prize. Uh, probably a good enough question could be a good good enough answer could be um, Montalcini won the Nobel Prize in 1986, mm? while Alexa answered Montalcini won the Nobel Prize in 19, 1986 on the topic and so on and so forth. Mm? So that part probably could be could be skipped. Uh, other other option that you may encounter with this system if you say uh, what's the age of some how old is a person a famous person and the answer some of the time is just this person is 40 years old in other cases the answer is this person was born on at and so it has next month it will have 40 years old okay yeah i just want 40 years as an answer so too much information but it's 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 difficult to uh, balance this with the other one so there are a lot of cases in which um, designers fail to do this very well so these are just six guidelines then as i told you before uh, amazon and google has other guidelines uh, in very different format just to give you an example so this is the first guideline of uh, amazon they are very very precise typically with some example of what you have to do and what you have not to do and they are quite precise so here and under be adaptable and are all the example about uh, match a variety of sentences of example to your goal specific goal or uh, handle hover answering that is the last guideline that we have seen Go ask for more information if it's not available, if needed. Last but one guidelines, and so on. Uh, uh, handle error gracefully. Hmm? Obviously, all the guidelines that you have seen more generally from the visual part that may apply here, the heuristics, hmm? recover from error, also here apply. It's not something that is specific for the visual part. Apply for any system, any, let's say, interactive system. Uh, or for instance Google has something uh, really different so this is the style guide for instance uh, that is split in language and like use short simple word and again as before uh, do and do not uh, example hmm? so place of order your set and place of order and this very very long uh, uh, answer is don't because and explain avoid technical jargon and sophisticated language obviously this is an example and to be considered for the specific target of user that they have in mind this is for extension for google assistant so the leverage on a platform that already exists it has some properties some function obviously if you are speaking if you are creating a um, a voice user interface for technician probably you uh, can use technical jargon in your specific application because maybe, maybe your application is technical is for helping something about the technical so you can in general when speaking to a general population or that is the main target of a google assistant and alexa and home usage a personal usage you should avoid technical jargon Same again, error handling and so on. Okay. Do you have any question about this? Okay, so we will see tomorrow in the lab, uh, start working on Milestone 3 and uh, have a good lunch. <laughs>